guys, it's Reenactment Day here, and in this video, I'm going to be getting dressed in World War I uh, US uniform. Now, my World War I impression has gotten to the point where I feel like I can do this video, because I pretty much have everything that I need. So, let us just get uh, started with the video. You, right now, I'm wearing the Mall 1916 pullover uh, shirt. This is made out of cotton and it is this nice I don't know like light brown color you can see it has some elbow pads right here it has two uh, two pockets right here you can see also see the buttons only go down halfway so this is a pullover shirt and you do not wear a t-shirt under this like the World War II wool shirt this is your undershirt uh, but something cool that I realized with one of these pockets, I always forget which one, it must be this one, is, let me just look over here, it has a pen pocket, which is pretty cool, pen pencil pocket, that's something pretty neat that I found out, put that over there, so very nice shirt, it's very comfortable, and it's just very nice to wear. Now, pants, I'm wearing the Mall 1917 wool trousers. They got some padding on the inner leg right by the knee, also on this one too, um, you know, on both legs. They are uh, made out of wool, they're, a bit, they're kind of itchy wool, so that's something. Um, these were made, you know, for the war, and when the U.S. was running out of green dye, so that's why they're more of a khaki color instead of the darker OD, like the... Mall 1912, because where did we get all, pretty much all of our green dye? From Germany, so couldn't really get green dye after 1917. So, this is the wool uniform. They lace up. Here, let me try and get it on camera. I don't know if I'll be able to. Yeah, I can't get my leg high enough, so I'll show you it when I show me wrapping the putties. But I am also wearing the just standard. World War II trouser belt. These were also the World War One style. There was, you could see the pre-1905 style belt, but I'm pretty sure it is the Mall 1910 uh, web belt. So that is the belt. Has the metal end down here. Simple metal. Uh, well, it's actually brass buckle. And that's the pants. You can see uh, pockets are more of a like the vertical kind of like dress pockets instead of the horizontal like the model 1937 wools and does still have a pocket watch pocket because I'm guessing those were more common in the 1910s because they were. Now next we have the model 1917 there we go model 1917 wool tunic made out of the same kind of wool you can see it's very nicely lined on the inside also should mention that the shirt most of this stuff is made by What Price Glory, and they are known for making really good World War I US and British items. So, you can see, very nice jacket, has four pockets on the outside, two on top, two on the bottom. Actually has a internal pocket, which I just found out. So, internal pocket. Again, very nicely lined, it's a rough wool, and as you can see, the neck is not lined, so uh, that could be a little irritating at first, but as you can see, I'll show you these two. The collar discs right here, one for the U.S., one that says U.S., and one that is for, uh, stands for infantry. Now, this would be switched out pretty much like the piping on garrison caps, but this U.S. pin is an original, so that's something pretty cool, and we will get this jacket on. It's a very fan fancy jacket. This one, just this is pretty much the dress uniform too. But the dress jacket, not even the dress jacket, just the Mall 1917 jacket. That's just buttons over, and has a couple hooks up by the neck for you to hook it into place. Now these can be a bit annoying until you get used to them, but. You can see, four pockets, very nice sleeves, 
the wool un or not even the cotton undershirt keeps your body protected from you know the wool but you can see it's a very nice uh, jacket now we are going to get onto the footwear like the putties and the boots and I will also show you what I was trying to show you with the bottom of the pants so I will come back when I adjust the camera down and show you all that now the boots that would be worn or could be worn with this uniform is the Mall 1917 trench boot so you got the hobnails you got the uh, I forget this name but you got that and the leather sole shoe all the way up and just the leather shoe is a the US uh, design of a French boot because we use a lot of French uh, when we got into the war we used a lot of French and British gear and then until we could pretty much get our own manufacturing of that same item so it is the US production kind of uh, Trent uh, French model boot but because it's US we uh, it is the model 1917 boot now later you could see the model 1918 boot which different hobnail patterns actually has hobnails around the heel too but this one was seen mostly during the war so I will get these boots on and I will come back when I'm ready to wrap the putties alright let's get started with the putties now what I did is I tucked the laces up inside my boot or up up inside my pant leg and if we'll start rolling the putties now some people say roll the putties the other way and then wrap them around just kind of like this but I'm fine dealing with it I, I like doing it like this I'm fine doing it like this so don't judge me too harshly in the comments so what I do is I actually start a bit up with the putties a bit higher up and then I go down first wrap it down a little bit and then and I just pull it tight because these boots are a bit loose around my uh, leg. So I use the putties to tie, make the boot tighter. But then I start going up. Alright, before I knocked over my camera, I was just working my way up with the putties. And you want to kind of keep them pretty tight. Just work your way up. With the putties. Now, like I said, I'm not the best with them. But I'm getting better. I'm better than I was when I first started, so I'm improving. And but when you are done with the wrap, wrapping the putties, you will be up around your knee. Now you don't want to go higher than your knee, but it's important to get the putties above your calf. Like the way your calf is, it kind of goes out and then it goes in where your knee is. You want to make sure you get up. To where it starts going back in so it doesn't fall back down when you wrap it so how I I just kind of tie uh, finish the legging or the lace bit the way I finish um well not even the way I just tuck it tuck the end through the strap and then tuck it into the top kind of like if you can even see it right up there you can kind of see it just goes in and that's worked well for me so I will get the other putty all wrapped on and I'll come back when they are on. So now I have the putties wrapped around the leg. Now I can already hear everybody in the comments, oh look at that gapping, that's terrible, that's insufficient, that's not historically accurate, blah 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 blah, blah. you know. They are not the best quality repro putties, they are brand new and I'm still figuring out how to roll them. So. Don't go hating on me too hard in the comments. I already know that this gapping ain't the best. But it's the best I can get right now. Until I break them in more or get a better pair. But nowhere really sells the pretty good repro putties. These are the best I can get right now. So I'll move back up and show you what's going on with the field gear. Alright, now we are going to move on to the field gear, and going right into it, we got, if I can get that hanger off of it, 
I got the Mall 1910 uh, haversack with the Mall 1910 shovel, Mall 1905 bayonet, and the Mall 1917 mounted cartridge belt. Now on the cartridge belt I have the Mall 1904 uh, first aid pouch, which was seen during World War II, or World War One, I, I should say. Uh, during World War One, you got a uh, 1911 holster, and you got the Mall 1910 canteen and canteen cover. So, this is the Mall 1917 mounted cartridge belt because it has this little space for a pistol magazine pouch, which I have. And you know, that's why I actually have the holster on here as well. But you can see right here, this is the Mall 1905 bayonet. This is an original. Dated 1906, right there, in 1906. Now, the uh, scabbard that I have is a bit messed up. It's not even a repro one. I got a repro cover thinking it was the scabbard. And then I just took a plastic one, cut it down, and fit it in there. So that's what I have for now. And it's kind of broken. But, until I get a better one, that's all I have. Now I'm also missing the mess kit pouch, they're often thrown away and they just kept like their spoons or something around their dog tags, but they're apparently very hard to find because I've been not, I've not been able to find a repro one that's in stock and I can't find an original for under $35. So right here, throw this over. go goes on just like a normal haversack and then buckles on just like a normal haversack or and belt now one thing that's different with the world war one belt is that the buckle right here is flat instead of the rounded kind of like the world war two it's all it's longer and it's flat so you can see this is the haversack with the cartridge belt and pistol magazine pouch and the holster and I got the an airsoft 1911 right here that I keep in the holster right there now that's a 1911A1 but what you gonna do so right here I just in this in the first aid pouch I have the I have an Altoids can just to keep it look full and works pretty well so, something cool that I noticed with this original haversack, I should say, is that when you're holding a rifle, like here, let me grab my fake wood rifle right over here, you can notice one of these bits on the end are bent, is bent down. Now, when you're holding a rifle, this is just the stock I got, that's exactly where you put it, right there. So, how that got bent was through recoil, you put the stock there, and every time he, he shot, that just bent this down over time. So, makes me say, this haversack was definitely issued. So, I will go over to rifle stock more later. Right here, we have the Mall 1917, or just the corrected English model gas mask. There's just a few ways you can mount this, or just wear this, I should say. One of the ways that I found is, well, down here by the side, is more you'd wear it when you're not on the front line, so you don't need the gas mask as readily available, so you have it down by your side. But, so you still have the gas mask if needed. Another way is with this little hook, or just goes around your neck, and this little right there. Now what you do is kind of wrap it around kind of like that and then you just take the extra strand that you got and kind of tuck it in front. This is a one way that I wear it sometimes but it can flop around a lot. There's probably a better way to wear it that I haven't figured out yet but another way that you can wear it is by taking this off and wearing it like this you actually take this cord, 
And hold on, I just gotta untie it real quick. Take this cord, and you. Give me a second. And you just undo this from all the hooks, um, from all the, you know, little loops on there. Just to about there. And you want to position the gas mask correctly. And it is sometimes easier to do this without the field gear on, so I might actually drop the field gear and throw this on. And you take this cord, bring this up, take the rest of the stuff out back like this, and then what you do is you take the cord and feed it through. And this keeps it tighter to your um, back, tighter to your chest area. And then you just pretty much wrap the extra cords through here. Now, I don't want to have it too tight because that squishes the bag and makes it so it's hard to get the gas mask back in. But then you just kind of finish it off with a simple knot. Right there. Simple knot. And then I can put the field gear back on. So, that's something. You'd probably want this quite a bit higher up. It seems to be drifting down a bit. But, it's one of the problems I have with this. And another reason why I use this hook is because it just fix, uh, has it better up, up there and doesn't like slip down at all. So I'm gonna come back when I have this all situated. All right, now that we have the field gear all situated, I'm going to go over the headwear that you could be wearing. So, of course, we'll start off with the most iconic, is the campaign hat. Now, this campaign hat, model 1912 campaign hat, has this blue cord for infantry, a nice leather strap, leather liner, it's made out of felt, now, this is a repro by Prairie Fire Leather Company, and it is very nice, like, uh, unbelievable quality. But, five rows of stitching, and it is just very nice. So, with this on your head, you can see it gives it that iconic doughboy look. Now, of course, with the campaign hat, you probably wouldn't have your gas mask up here, because these weren't worn on the front. But, just to give you a look of the campaign hat. It's very nice, very nice to wear, and actually, I'd say my favorite hat, World War One, for the U.S. Next is the replacement for the campaign hat. It's the overseas cap. This is what you'd be seeing around, actually when you're off the lines, a lot more than the campaign hat because you can't really can't transport the campaign hat. So you got the overseas cap to replace it. Campaign hat was more stateside. So, very nice wool campaign hat. And not too much about it. It's a wool fabric just folded a bunch into a campaign hat. No, not a campaign hat. An overseas cap. So, that's the cap. Now, very, for a very short time, and for mostly the Harlem Hellfighters, you could see some U.S. troops with the Adrian helmet, but we soon discovered this helmet wasn't the best, so we switched over to the Brody helmet. So I will throw this on, you can see, Adrian to the Brody. Now, it's not that this was a bad helmet, it's that it wasn't made out of the best steel, and it was made out of way too many pieces. While the Brody helmet, not too many pieces, made out of better steel, and you can see the liner, 
would be oil cloth with a netting and a felt pad down here. Now if this was British, that would be asbestos right there, so wouldn't wear a British one, an original British one with the original liner. But there's a repro liner, original shell, and this is where the chin strap would be. And now grab the Model 1903, and this would be the handguard on. I ha I don't know how to put it on yet. Well, I know how. I just don't have the pieces. So this is the rifle they would be wearing or er, holding and using during the war. They would also could have the P, the P-17 rifle, but this was, actually the P-17 rifle was more common than the O-3, but I just really like an O-3. So, that is what I'm holding. These were used pre-war and post-war, and even in World War II, the World War, the interwar period was used but only by the O-3. We had the 17s in stockpile, and they saw limited use in World War II, but it was mostly the O3. That was pre-war, during war. No, pre-war, then during war, it was mostly the P-17, because we could make them faster. And post-war, it was back to the O3. And in World War II, you saw the O3 alongside the M1 and the P-17, not too much. So, I know what you're all, you're all saying. Wear the gas mask. So, I'm getting to that. So... A way, like they, I've seen videos of how soldiers wear the gas mask or how to put it on. And what I've seen is they take the chin, the helmet, they kind of put their hand through the chin strap like that so you still have your helmet with, uh, uh, with you. You open the bag, and I just realized I put the bag on backwards, so forgive me. Bag would go the other way, so the flaps would be on the inside. Forgive me for that. But then you can see the gas mask has the internal bits right there, nose, clamp, and a mouthpiece. And you got the flapper valve down here, made out of rubberized canvas, or rubber lined canvas too, I should say. Goes over the mouth. Now you're not gonna be able to hear me, so Now, again, forgive me, the gas mask bag is on backwards, which I do that more than you think. Inside the bag, we have the filter and this little spring that keeps sliding around. Hold on. Little spring bit. Now, the spring bit was to keep the filter up off the bottom of the gas mask bag so you can actually breathe. And you can just put the filter back in with it. And the gas mask annoyingly trying to fit into the bag. It's annoying with the hose, but you finally hit that like direct angle and it goes in very easy. So that's the problem I've been having with this. Doesn't fit the best, and but unless it's at this perfect angle. So I'll come back when I have the mask back in the bag. So while the camera was cut, I turned the gas mask bag the right way. But forgive me for that. So you can see Brody helmet, gas mask. Now, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I'm going to go basically over everything that I have. I got my 1917 wool uniform, my 1916 undershirt. You got collar discs, no designation for them. Well, 1917 or corrected English model of gas mask and the bag. You got a 1917 mounted cartridge belt, could also be the Mall 1917 belt or the Mall 1910. You got the Mall 1910 haversack with Mall 1910 shovel. You got uh, you got the holster, 
1910 canteen and canteen cover, 1904 first aid pouch, 1917 boots and putties. So that's pretty much everything. Also the Model 1917 Brody. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you found this informational and enjoyable. Um, if you have any video ideas, please put them in the comments. Any questions on this or corrections, please also put them in the comments. Now, like I said, I already know the putties are terrible and I have the gas mask bag on backwards. So forgive me for that. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys later.